Infinite 360 roll on the DJI Ronin S is one of its coolest and most unique features. Unfortunately, it's not a pre-configured setting on the gimbal, so I'm gonna show you how to set up Infinite Roll, and then I'll explain why and how you might wanna use it. With your camera balanced, power on the gimbal, and then make sure you have the DJI Ronin app downloaded and installed on your phone. Make sure that you're connected to your gimbal, and then you just go into the configuration settings. The DJI Ronin has three user profiles. That's what the one, two, and three LED lights on the back of it stand for. All you need to do is select which profile you wanna to use to set up with the 360 infinite roll. Since I don't use the roll that often, I set it as profile three, and then I know anytime that I wanna use it, I just switch into three and I'm good to go. Go ahead and open up control settings, and then you're gonna make some changes on channels one, two, and three. Channels one and two are gonna be set to NA, which means they're not gonna have any kind of motion assigned to them and channel three is gonna be set to roll. What this means is that when you push the joystick on the Ronin left or right, the gimbal will start rolling, but if you push it forward or backwards, it's not gonna do anything, so it's not gonna throw your camera out of whack, and it's gonna make it really easy to get a nice straight roll. Once you're done with that, I recommend checking out some of the motion settings. You can adjust these to your liking, but I've had good luck with a low dead band, a medium maximum speed, and high smoothing. This seems to give the smoothest, most natural looking roll, even though it's a super unnatural looking move. Now on the gimbal, anytime you activate user profile three, you'll be ready to do the infinite roll. All you need to do is put the gimbal into flashlight mode and then move the joystick left or right and it'll just keep rotating the camera forever until you stop or it runs out of battery. When you're done with the infinite roll, you can switch into one of the other user profiles and go back to using the gimbal as normal. So when would you actually need to use this move? I think that restraint is key. The infinite roll reminds me a lot of what it was like when drones first came out, where up until that point in time, the average person had never been able to get aerial video and photos so easily. And so just the fact that you could get a shot from up in the sky was pretty revolutionary. And you could literally just share a video that was just a random drone video and people's minds were totally blown. But then I think a lot of us are pretty familiar with how drone video got a little bit overdone for a while, and now I think many people have settled into a good balance of being able to utilize drone video to improve or enhance whatever story or point they're trying to make in their overall video. And I think Infinite Roll is the same thing. Right now, it's new. Up until this point, to do a 360 barrel roll move with a camera, it basically just wasn't possible for the average person unless you had access to tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of equipment. Basically, unless you were like a professional full-on Hollywood movie shoot, it just wasn't something you could do. And now that these like relatively affordable gimbals make that possible, it's awesome that that's just in the hands of the average person if they want it. And then the danger is, of course, now there's gonna be infinite rolls in every video. So you do wanna be careful with how you use it, but I think that when used appropriately and when used tastefully, it can add such a cool visual element and visual dynamic to your videos that really does grab people's attention and make them go like, whoa, I can't believe, what am I looking at? That's really cool. So it's all on how you choose to use your creativity to incorporate all of these different moves and different tools. Really, just like anything, it's a tool that should be in your toolkit and you use it when appropriate. And as a YouTuber or a filmmaker or just somebody who's interested in video, having these useful tools in your toolkit is really crucial. So I did put together a short playlist of videos I've made that I think are specifically helpful towards filmmaking and video production. Some of them are focused on gear and equipment and others are just tips and techniques that I think you'll probably find super duper useful.